Welcome to Adcock Ingram Healthcare, Clayville. The factory is located in the light industrial area of Clayville and comprises pharmaceutical manufacturing, packing and testing, an extremely modern laboratory facility, about 11,000 square meters of warehouse space and 900 square meters of office space. The facility has the capacity to produce 12 million liters of liquids per annum, with an ability to increase this to 18 million liters per annum if required. Some degree of effervescent specialization exists with the production of around 400,000 kilograms of effervescent granules and powders and 24 million effervescent tablets each year. The facility is regularly audited by the Medicines Control Council, MCC, to ensure our Good Manufacturing Practice GMP, certificate is in good standing in terms of the requirements of the Medicines and Related Substances Act of 1965. Core to the success of our facility is producing a quality and reliable product that can be used with confidence by our customers. Center to this is our Integrated Quality Management System, QMS, which ensures that any quality risk is eliminated. To run a plant such as this, the following utilities are engaged. Two gas-driven boilers delivering 2,000 kilograms of steam per hour, an oil-free compressor, and a number of chiller units. This ensures that the plant maintains exacting environmental conditions and room pressure differentials in all our production areas. A specialized reverse osmosis water plant produces 5,000 liters of purified water per hour for production use. All our electrical systems are backed up by three backup generators with a rated output of 2,500 kVA should a power outage occur. The information and instructions in this DVD are designed to prevent you and your fellow workers from getting injured or becoming sick while working at this plant. With your support, we can work without serious injury to anyone and without damage to property and the environment. This training refers to general rules which everyone must follow and is based on the requirements of the Occupational Health and Safety Act No. 85 of 1993. Adcock Ingram, a branded healthcare company, is committed to ensuring that in all its spheres of activity, it will conduct itself in a way that is safe, healthy and environmentally friendly. Adcock Ingram is committed to a safety, health and environmental or SHE management program through the implementation of the best operating practices and standards in all its facilities and operations. Adcock Ingram will conform to sound corporate governance for risk control and risk management relating to SHE issues. Adcock Ingram will measure, review and report on SHE indicators. Adcock Ingram considers the SHE management program to be of utmost importance and is totally committed to a philosophy of continuous improvement. This SHE policy statement is applicable to all facilities and operations of Adcock Ingram and its subsidiaries. A copy of this policy is included in the induction handbook. All employees working at this plant are important to the company and to their families. Every individual has the right to a safe and healthy workplace and the right to return from work every day healthy and without injury. We are committed to this goal, which we believe can only be achieved by dedicated, joint effort by all involved. As an individual, everyone has the right and obligation to stop and correct any unsafe act or condition. In terms of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, both the employer and the employees are responsible for health and safety. Significant efforts have been made to ensure your safety at this facility. In the unlikely event of an emergency arising, the following actions are to be taken by all persons on site. 
If you discover a fire, raise the fire alarm. These are red boxes spread throughout the plant. If you have been trained and are able to use a fire extinguisher, you may try to extinguish the fire if it is safe to do so. Never put your own safety at risk. If unable to extinguish the fire, walk immediately to the nearest fire escape, indicated by the green man and green arrow. Follow the direction of the arrow, as this indicates the shortest route out of the building. Do not re-enter the building until the all-clear has been given and you have been instructed to do so. Attention please, this is an emergency. Please leave the building by the nearest available exit. When the fire alarm sounds, all employees are to evacuate the building. The following procedure is to be followed. Keep calm. Stop what you are doing. On instruction from the supervisor, shut down all equipment and make your workstation safe. Where safe and possible to do so, office staff are to place documents in drawers. Leave your personal possessions behind. Leave the building in your GMP clothing. Do not change. Evacuation marshals wearing pink hard hats will indicate the way out of the building. Leave the building in an orderly manner through the nearest emergency exit, indicated by the green man and green arrow. Walk briskly, but never run. Gather at your designated assembly point. Roll call will be taken to ensure all employees and visitors have been evacuated and are accounted for. Keep quiet at the assembly point so the evacuation marshals can be heard and can complete the roll call in the shortest possible time. Remember, it could be you that we are looking for. Remain at the assembly point until instructed to do otherwise by the assembly point controller. Firefighting equipment and emergency exits are placed throughout the plant for your safety. Any person found tampering with this equipment in any way will be liable to disciplinary action. Access to the site is controlled by the security company. On entering the plant, each individual is expected to declare all personal equipment brought on site, i.e. computers, cameras, tools, declare all personal medication to security before bringing it on site. All persons who enter the site may be subject to a random breathalyzer test and or drug test. Failing this test will mean access to the site is denied. All persons leaving the plant may be subjected to a random searching. At these premises, no person may bring alcoholic drinks or drugs unless prescribed and declared on site, consume alcohol or partake of prohibited substances, commit a criminal offence, damage property, carry out practical jokes, horseplay or fight, use abusive language, bring in unauthorised persons, assault or intimidate any person or hold meetings without authority of their supervisor. Good personal hygiene is important in the plant. Always wash your hands before entering and when leaving your workplace. You may use hand sanitizer to do this. Sanitizer is strategically placed at access points to the manufacturing areas. Eating and drinking is allowed in designated areas only. Under no circumstances may food or drinks be taken into manufacturing areas. You may only smoke in designated smoking areas. Smoking outside these areas is a disciplinary offence. CGMP stands for Current Good Manufacturing Practice. The purpose of GMP is to protect the product 
and ensure that it is not contaminated during the manufacturing process. There are a number of areas in the plant where a specific dress code applies to comply with GMP requirements. If you enter a manufacturing area, you must ensure that the correct dress requirements for that area are complied with. If in doubt, ask. In addition to the special clothing you are required to wear, note that no cosmetics may be worn in the factory. This includes false fingernails, nail polish, false eyelashes, face powder, lipstick or mascara. No jewellery may be worn in the plant. This includes rings, bracelets, wristwatches, necklaces and earrings. No electronic media, including cell phones, may be taken into manufacturing areas. The plant is essentially divided into three dress code zones. The primary areas are where the product is being manufactured and are most vulnerable to contamination. These areas also include filling and sealing of packaging units. In these areas, the employee will wear lint-free garments, mop caps, snoods for men with facial hair, or dust masks for all other employees, and overshoes. In some areas, additional gowning may be required, over and above the requirements for primary areas. The secondary areas are where the sealed product is being labelled and further processed to produce the final product. In these areas, the employee will wear a production dust coat, mop cap, snoods and overshoes. In unzoned areas, the employee will wear either street clothes or a warehouse dust coat only. All Adcock Ingram employees will be taught the correct dress code in a formal training program on an annual basis. Visitors will be guided by their host at all times. Every person at this plant is responsible for preventing injury to themselves and other workers. Employees must follow the safety rules and obey all safety instructions given to them by their supervisor and other safety representatives. Employees must read and obey all safety signs. If you see anyone doing something which could cause an incident or an accident, you must warn them immediately. If they persist, you must report this to your supervisor or an SHE representative. Anyone who does not obey safety rules is liable to be disciplined. If in doubt, ask your supervisor or another responsible person for help. Personal protective equipment, PPE, is clothing that is issued to you to protect you from harm. The PPE is only effective when it is worn correctly. Report any loss or damage to personal protective clothing or safety equipment immediately to your supervisor or SHE representative. General safety rules for clothing. Do not wear torn or loose clothing. Always wear suitable protective clothing as prescribed for the area you work in and approved factory shoes or flat, closed, non-slip shoes. Wear proper eye protection when grinding or welding, working with glass, working with chemicals, or where notices say eye protection must be worn. You only have two eyes, look after them. Wear hearing protection whenever notices say you are in a hearing protection area and anywhere else where noise is present. Areas where noise is present are general plant manufacturing, effervescent, citrus soda, vitathion and the liquids department general plant, primary and secondary packing areas, HVL manufacturing, HVL filling rooms in the packing halls, the workshop when machinery is used, and the boiler room. Different types of respiratory protection are required in production areas. 
This equipment provides protection to your lungs and respiratory tract, but only if worn correctly. Some masks are to protect the product from contamination, and some are to protect the worker from exposure to respiratory hazards. Make sure you wear the correct mask. Areas where masks should be worn can include areas where there is open product, dusty areas, when working with any toxic chemicals, or when instructed to do so. Use gloves, aprons, or other special clothing when handling chemicals, rough materials, hot or cold objects, or sharp-edged objects. When lifting or carrying something, make sure that you get help with heavy or bulky materials, more than 25 kilograms. Use mechanical aids where available, trolleys, pallet jacks, and overhead cranes. You bend your knees and keep your back nearly straight. There is a clear path to where you want to go before starting the lift. Ladders are very useful but can be dangerous. When using a ladder, always use a shoulder bag or material hoist to lift loads or tools. Make sure the ladder is safe to use and not damaged. Make sure the ladder is sturdy and the right length for the task. Make sure the ladder is secure at the top and bottom. If it cannot be secured, get a second worker to hold the ladder steady for you. Use both hands when climbing the ladder and store the ladder flat when not in use. Compressed air is air under pressure and must be used with caution as it may cause nasty injuries. The following rules should be followed to prevent injuries associated with compressed air use. Do not use an air hose to clean clothing and do not point it at another person. Use protective eyewear when using compressed air and only use compressed air for the required task, which is normally to blow down equipment. Moving machinery can be very dangerous. Guards are put in place to protect the worker from moving parts, which may cause injury. Following these rules will keep you safe when operating moving machinery. Before starting a machine, make sure all guards are in place. Never put your hands into moving machinery always stop the machine. Always stop and isolate or lock out the machine before repairing or adjusting it. Never override safety devices or the lockout tag out systems on a machine. Do not use machinery you have not been trained to use. Do not work on electrical equipment until it has been made safe by a qualified electrician. If a lockout tag is on a machine, it has been locked out. Do not use it. Do not use electrical power tools or equipment while standing in water. Chemicals can be harmful and this must be respected. There are many chemicals used on site in the form of both raw materials for the product and chemicals used in analytical and cleaning processes. The following general rules, if followed, will ensure your safety when working with chemicals. Store all flammable liquids in the flammable store or the dedicated flammable cupboard. Amounts of flammable liquids for one day use only may be kept in the work area. Always wash hands after working with chemicals. In some cases you may have to wear gloves. This will be indicated by the following signage. Ensure that containers are correctly labelled. Keep lids of containers on to prevent vapours from escaping. 
When handling poisonous chemicals, follow these rules. Appropriate PPE must be worn at all times when handling reagents and chemicals. Arrange to have a second person wearing the correct safety clothing on standby to assist you should an emergency arise. Report all instances of injury, no matter how minor the injury might seem, to the medical centre or your supervisor for attention. Report for medical surveillance when instructed to do so. Exposure to noise may cause hearing loss. To prevent this loss, the following actions have been implemented. Uncontrolled exposure to noise causes noise-induced hearing loss. Noise levels are measured every two years. All areas where noise is measured above 85 decibels are declared noise zones. The following signage indicates you are entering a noise zone. Workers in these areas must use hearing protection at all times your supervisor will issue you with the correct hearing protection devices. Doors to noise zones must be kept closed at all times. Not wearing your hearing protection can cause an increase in accidents due to tiredness and loss of concentration. Every worker is required to report to the occupational health clinic to have their hearing tested on an annual basis. When you leave Adcock Ingram, you are required by law to have an exit audiogram done. Keep your working area clean by regularly sweeping up waste and spills, putting refuse in the bins provided, and cleaning up as you work. Keep access ways safe by not blocking fire exit or traffic lanes with any items such as tools, materials or product and keeping loose material off stairs and walkways. Get to know your working area. In particular, make sure you know what the warning signs mean, that you know the location of firefighting equipment and the nearest emergency exit and the first aiders, firefighters and SHE reps are familiar to you. All incidents must be reported as soon as possible but before the end of a shift. Get treatment immediately, even for minor injuries and make sure that all injuries are reported. Follow all medical advice and report to clinic if concerned. Do not leave site without reporting an incident. All incidents are investigated to identify root causes and to prevent recurrence. Adcock Ingram Clayville is committed to ensuring that its carbon footprint is kept as near neutral as possible and that no harm is done to the environment. This is achieved through the actions of all employees at the Adcock Ingram Clayville site. Ways that pollution is reduced include following the standard operating procedures to reduce waste generated on site, placing all waste in designated waste areas where it is segregated by waste type or category, not leaving taps to run, this wastes water, reporting all leaks promptly, switching off lights when not in use and having all equipment checked to ensure it is in optimal working condition. Waste that is generated at this site includes domestic or general waste, i.e. from the kitchen and canteen, building and demolition waste, hazardous waste and pharmaceutical waste, i.e. laboratory waste and product waste, and recyclable waste, i.e. waste that can be reused. All waste is stored in the waste area. Storage of waste is to be strictly controlled. The waste area is restricted in terms of access and the area is managed by dedicated employees. Stop and think before you act. Be responsible. Take safety seriously. It may be your own life that you save.